This is the word that is used when John says, God is, the word there is agape. So this love is actually a person. And this will be a problem. That's why you cannot even experience this love without God. So all the other loves are possible except this one without God. You cannot know this one without God. We find uh, in the book of 1 John chapter 4, it says, He that does not agape does not know God, for God is agape. Yes. It goes on to say, and now here is agape. Not that we first agape God, but that God agape us. In other words, if God don't give this to you, you can't even give it back to God. So God gives you this stuff first. And then you can give it to him and to everybody else. But he hasn't given it to you. You don't have it. The book of Romans, chapter 6, says, For the agape of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is in us. Holy Spirit brings this thing. So you can't work this one up. You can't uh, read this out of books. You can't get this from another person by uh, intercourse, interaction with them. This comes from God. All right. What is love? Oh. So we know that <laughs> relationship between friends is not love, agape. Relationship between family and parents, that's not agape. Relationship between two physical beings is not agape. Sexual attraction. So what is, what is this? What is agape? What really is agape? To, de to describe agape, we've got to to deal with, with uh, a list that I want you to write down. First, I want you to write the list. Uh, if you have any room in the back of your sheet, write the word for Leo. What is filio? It's love between friends. friends. Okay. Filio is love that is obligational. Write that down. It is love that is based on like. Because you like a person, you, you're with them. It is based on looks. They look like my type. It's based on personality. She and I are similar. It's based on compatibility. This love is based on pressure. It's based on expectation. And it's based on conditions. Now you look at this list. This is a, this is a danger zone right here. It's a definite danger zone right here. When two friends are uh, together, or when, when two people become friends, they feel obligated to one another. And that creates some problems. People become friends because they like one another. Some of you, are, you know, we call this clicking. In clicks. You like one another, based, it's based on like. Which means, if you don't like the person, no friends. Based on looks, 
you can look a person up, you know, you size them up and everything, and you see if they, you know, they make a good friend, you know. Uh, it's terrible. This love is really sick. Personality. Now, nobody's, a, no two persons are the same, so I don't know where you can base your relationship on personality. Okay, so right away you, you are, you are excommunicating a lot of people or excluding a lot of people, period. They, they were never in to be excommunicated. Compatibility. You can't compare yourself with anybody. The Bible says we don't do, we don't do that. We compare ourselves with ourselves. But this kind of love does that. Say, hey, we're compatible. People get married based on this stuff here. Could you imagine what they, what they get married in? They get married in Philio. Pressure. Why does Philio have pressure? Because the pressure is produced by expectation, which is because of conditions. Now, you're my friend as long as you, and then you get this long list. Okay? Which means the minute you give a person uh, a, 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 a a cause for your relationship, you've established a condition. And therefore, they, they are expected to follow these conditions and live up to this particular uh, list of rules. Otherwise, uh, you disappoint them, and therefore they are always under pressure to constantly please you or to make sure they do things right. That means this person can never be themselves. So you can see this here is out for marriage, totally out. Let's look at Stego a minute. Family. Put a list under it. I got three of them here. Feel affection. Remember, we listed under Stego that this is family, relatives, parents, um, between uncle, aunts, cousins. This is Stego, the relationship there. And so you feel affection for your mother and your father. You feel affection for your brother, your sister. You feel affection for your cousins. Uh, is this relational affection because of biological relationship? Uh, this therefore depends on relationship. This here is also an obligation then. Let me show you how dangerous this is. And this is also in, uh, in marriages. This stuff here is in marriages. Okay, my brother's here today. I'm going to use him as an example because, you know, we're related. Let's say uh, my brother car has a flat tire. And I'm passing around along the street. And I stop to help him. You know what makes me stop to help him? Just on a stereo level? Because I'm obligated. I don't really like fixing tires, and I don't really want to stop. Matter of fact, I'm late, and I don't want to stop. But that's my brother. I watch the pressure. If I pass, <laughs> you understand? If I pass, and he hailed me, and I, you know, say hello and everything, and go straight past, you see the problem? When I see him again, Not because you love your mama. Don't tell me that. Because of pressure. Because of pressure. Mm -hmm. Obligation. You are part of this house. And so the expectations are there. And so you do it even though, notice, you hate what you're doing. <laughs> no two ways to sound too good. You hate what you're doing. But you're doing it. So you're not doing it because you love it. Neither are you doing it because you love them. You're doing it because you're stuck in the family. So that's not love. That's obligation. A lot of people get married like that. Say, Only because you use my wife I do in this, you know. Relationship. Hear it? Say, Only because you use my husband I cook for you, you know. 
relationship. Yeah? The problem with, uh, with this kind of love is that this love, this relationship love, uh, <laughs> is one that was It destroys, uh, it destroys unity, it sure does. Do you know why most married couples have problems? Because they take each other for granted. Jesus had a problem with this kind of love. When he told the disciples, he says, uh, this is the word he used, you know. Servant. John chapter 15, verse 15, Jesus talks to these disciples. He says, uh, I, I, I no longer call you servants. Why? Because servants don't, don't really know what's going on in the master's house. The servants, you know, they come around and they are part of the house uh, responsibilities in the house. So a servant doesn't know what's going on in the master's head. A servant doesn't know the master's desires or his hurts or his aspirations or his problems. The servant just does what he's told because he's a servant and he's expected to do these things. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, but friends. Now, what is a friend? He says, I call you friends because I've told you everything I know. So you could always test and find out if your wife is, is your friend. Does she know what your so-called friends know? Because a friend is someone who tells all. Now we got problems. I can feel your mind going bing, 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 bing. See? And so, if anyone should be your friend, it should be your, your, your spouse, your husband, or your wife. And Jesus, was, Jesus was trying to get rid of relationship. See the problem? Now, when two people get married, in an instant, they become related. And it's documented by a covenant from government. Husband and wife. And every time we use the word husband or wife, we diminish our relationship. Because we're saying to the other person, we know one another. Just by using the word husband. It means we know one. Just like I say, if I use the word, this is my brother. The implications are we know one another. But we don't. We just happen to be born from the same family, parents. And so we have to become friends. See? Brothers and sisters are the same word Jesus used for servants. It's the same word for servants. It means house minister. Someone who's in the same house, you know, technically because of, of uh, relationship, obligation. And so if I get my, 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 my wife and I, uh, my wife could be my servant, I could be her servant, or we could be friends. And Jesus promotes servants to friends, relationships to friends, see. And so don't think that because you get married to someone you know them. Friendships are not gifts, they are results. And this thing here is the same thing with the family. My brother is a gift to me, but we're not, you know, but our friendship is, is not a gift. We need to, we need to develop friendships. It takes a long time and a lot of spilling guts and, and sharing each other's uh, hurts and feelings and goals and aspirations and, you know, low times and high times and, you know, having time for each other and, 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 and you know, spending time together. It's a big deal to have a friend. Most people want to be married and have a good relationship with their spouse but spend most of their time with their buddies. You can't do that because you, you build in friendships with your buddies. Who you spend time with is who you spill to. See? And so you find that your buddies will be closer to you than your spouse. If you're not careful. And when you have a problem, instead of going to your spouse, who you should go to, you go to your friends. Because they're the ones who become your friends. See? And so we got to be careful with this thing. Uh, this obligation thing. Wives iron your shirt simply because they're obligated. Not because they love you. <laughs> You know, uh, husbands, you know, fix the zinc only because they're the husband. Not because they really love the wife who got to, you know, cook in the kitchen. See? And so it, it's, it's a sick love. It's a sick thing to base your relationship on. 
Let me give you a list for Eros. This is a long list for Eros I got here. Eros is the big problem. Eros is uh, sensual. Welcome to the prayer for forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. This is simply a video I've put together where I like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Heavenly Father together. Please continue to meditate on this prayer for yourself. Speak it daily or listen to this video over and over again. And allow the Word of God concerning forgiveness, renewal, and repentance of sins to reach deep into your spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we gather together here online and come into agreement in the wonderful and powerful name of Jesus. Where two or more are gathered, there you shall surely be. And anything we agree upon as touching you will surely do. The Bible says that if there's any unforgiveness, that it should be dealt with before praying. Therefore, we release any anger, bad feelings, resentment, or any other wrong attitude before you now. We lay it at your feet and we release and forgive those who have wronged us. I lift up those watching this video and we come into agreement and lift up forgiveness, renewal, and repentance. Father, your word says that if we ask for mercy and for forgiveness, you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Purely on the basis of the promises of forgiveness in your word, with all feeling aside, we believe that the listener is forgiven. Humbly they come before your throne to receive this grace and mercy. Help the listener to forgive themselves and let the past go. We declare in agreement that Jesus is Lord over the listener, and if they believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead, they will be saved with heaven being their eternal home. We receive it and we praise you, Father. Help the listener's unbelief. Their slate is wiped clean right now. In the face of any feeling of guilt and unworthiness, the listener receives their forgiveness from you. The guilt is for leaving and the sin is removed because of your love for them. You have forgiven their sins completely. They are blessed. God in heaven, you have forgiven them because of what Jesus has done. It is not about what they do or don't do. It is by grace through faith that they have forgiveness. They cannot earn it, but you have freely given forgiveness to them because they asked. Praise the Lord. Renew them right now by your spirit in Jesus' name. We speak refreshing over their mind, will, emotions, and body right now in Jesus' name. You, Father, are holding nothing against them. You, Father, are not holding anything back from them. You chose the listener in Christ before the foundation of the world that they should be holy and blameless in your sight. Thanks be to you. In Jesus, they have redemption, deliverance and salvation through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of their offenses, shortcomings and trespasses in accordance with the riches and the generosity of your gracious favor. Father, the listener has received your son, Jesus. They believe in his name. Through Jesus, you have given them the right to become your child. Thank you for forgiving them entirely and absolving them from all guilt. They are more than conquerors through the blood of Jesus. They are set free from the past in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. By His grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of His Word instantly comes to pass in your spirit, and when you are born again, there is a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian. 
a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.